Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with a, a guy I've known for a little while since I came here in Canada. But um, up to this very minute, I'm getting more and more information on this guy um, from Mr. Skirt. Um, so I'll ask him to introduce himself, his name, and um, I think he's going to make a few people happy today because we've been really seeking him out. He doesn't like to be seen. Um, he likes to be behind the scenes, but he has done a lot in this community. And uh, I was persistent to try and get him. So, so maybe you could introduce yourself, your name, and um, I think the whole room is going to start jumping up when you introduce yourself. So Yeah, keep... my name is uh, Shecky Yewood. Um Came to Canada in 64. And um, I've worked in the community from 70 to around 75 with a group called BCAC, which eventually turned into Area Subman Center. Um, I was mainly responsible for the athletics and recreation in the group. And, um, Again, coming from a football background, I gravitated towards that. Um, but we, we, we tried to do other things. Uh, in the uh, uh, a boxing program. We used to have swim classes on the weekends and uh, that sort of stuff. So, okay. But um, besides the Tugman program, which we're going to elaborate on um, as we go along, let me just rewind a little bit here based on information just received here into the studio about you being is it true that you were one of the original guys of Luton Town from Trinidad? No, no, not the one of the originals. <laughs> I'm, I'm from Belmont and um, as a young guy in, in those days um, size didn't really matter in football um, as long as you could have played uh, you, you, you were welcome. And I always played with the older boy. And I guess maybe because uh, I was I was able to match with them as well. You know. Um, so uh, I I joined with Luton Town when I was about uh, maybe fifteen or so, fourteen, fifteen. Um, other than that, I was just playing. Sunday morning football and uh, sort of stuff, teams up in Belmont. Well, teams up in Belmont, uh, I can run through that. Sheffield, Liverpool, um, leagues as in what, Movina? What leagues are you were playing in? Oh, no, no, I was before that. We, we, we were in like uh, Hutchinson League. <laughs> um, and that would have been, jeez, uh, in the mid 50s, 53, 54. Okay. That that you moving and they went came a little after. But but um Mr. Ewan, um okay. uh you're a surprising guy because when I met you in the Irish gym down on Pape, you were taking a little run with us with a serious dribbling ability. Um and I didn't really know I interviewed Ron Reiner and he mentioned that you were part of the original I reached starting lineup. He called the first team, and he called you and Ian Jones as the inside forwards. What was that like? Yeah, well, uh, all we we all knew each other from home. Um, I I played with with Tim Mary, um, and Ian played with 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 uh, Q, uh, QRC. You know, um, Vivian and myself played in Luton Town when we were teenagers. Um, you know, so uh, we, we we all knew each other at the time, and uh, yeah, we started playing in Ivy at the first uh, couple of years. So how you got uh, how you guys linked up? Um, seeing that you the one of the early guys, we haven't had anybody before '63. Um, how was it for you? Uh, I came here in '73, and I was struggling to find black faces. How was it for you? I know we were talking, and you were mentioning. 
the whole evolution of the town from all the way by um, Batus and all these places. Um, how was it to you for meeting up these guys like Vivian and those guys? Because so full, full, came, full was the only thing. I was just on a visit actually. Um, I was working with Vivi and uh, they had a free ticket. So I came up to visit my brother who was at U of T. And uh, there were lots of guys who were from QRC and St. Mary's who were only at U of T. And, um, uh, you know, pressure and things, they, 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 they tried to get me to stay up and uh, do something with your life, you know, that kind of talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I stayed, uh, and uh, two years after, I, I, I went to McMaster. And uh, that, you know, that's how we all, we all together. It was all our West Dublin community, and that is small, but, um, you know, we tended to, 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 to stay together. And, that, and that's how the, the football actually started. It was just scrimmaging at um, U of T on the, 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 the Harbour Street side, you know, that field there. You know, so. But yeah, and then everybody started coming up, like Vivian came up after, um, uh, Ian was up, uh, and you know, more, more, more and more people started to come around that time, you know, so. So, well, Ms. Chucky, you would see the development of both the West Indies United and the Irie. Um, seeing that you started the Irie lineup, did the West Indies situation bypass you? You never went that way or it wasn't available to you? No, I really, um, I, I, I think when West Indies started, um, we were still like scrimmage, you know, playing pick-up ball at, at, at U of T, you know. And then uh, I think with Miles and um, more people coming up, um, Carol, uh, Dugger, everybody else, you know, they, they decided they wanted a forward team, so, you know. And I, 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 I believe that's how it started, you know. Uh, at the age of seven, almost every night, I remember all these things going way back, you know, but, uh, yeah. So is it safe to say now that the Chucky I know and didn't know too much about being like being behind the scenes, that you really never really pursued the soccer seriously until the friends thing made sense to you with the IRE thing. So you never really pursued the pursued playing seriously with West Indies because as we all know you like it behind the scenes. Is that a correct assessment? Yeah, I, I, I um I, I I think West Indies uh I, I to be honest I, I, I can't I know I remember when West Indies started. You know, I don't know how they formed and you know uh, the, 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 the real history behind it, you know. But I just knew that at around that time, uh, they had formed their team. And then uh, we just decided, I guess must have been, maybe it was Miles, I don't know, I can't remember, you know, decided, hey, let, 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 let's uh, get a team together and, and start this place here, you know. And they joined the, 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 the TND and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay, so seeing that you stayed out of it, playing for Irie, what um, Ron Reiner said is that you guys weren't in the same division, so I would think you were spared the, um, the task of playing against West Indies for quite a while. Um, before, because when I came here, in, uh, when I joined Irie in 74, you were wrong, but you weren't really playing. I can't remember if you were playing on the, the lower teams. So, did you so, ever get the, the the chance to play against West Indies? We, again, only with, um, not, not, uh, 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 to be honest, not really, because around the 70s, when I started working with BCAC and started working with, with the young kids, and that's when I got out the first BCAC team, and I think that was 70 or 71, and um, I was on the team, and doing the rec and, and social work for the next four or five years. So it, it, it was kind of um, time consuming. I didn't have evenings to, 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 take, to go and practice and all that stuff. So, you know, that's so like, what, that's like I told you, recreation is a, not a nine to five job. You know, uh, it, it, it's a lot of evenings. When, when kids are out of school, it's after four. You know, so you have them until maybe six you know, that kind of stuff. So it's, um, it, it, it's a 
time away from really wanting to play. And I was really interested in the youth work at, at the time. That's what I know. That's that makes sense to me. That's the reason why the Czechia I know. That's exactly because as I was saying to um, Julian, I didn't really know a lot of the things. So you were doing your thing behind the scenes, dedicated to what you were doing, and I yeah. guess you prioritized what you wanted to get interested in. But um, yeah. in moving forward now, in with the um, the top one thing, um, I see a lot of prominent named people who developed to be good players, good coaches and stuff pass through you. Um, we've been calling it all the time and we wouldn't stop calling it because you need to be recognized for them things. The, the Barry Hackett's, the Mike Nicky's, the how did they all, did they ever meet all at once or they came through at different times? I see Kurt okay, Howard. Uh, Barry and they came uh, just before someone had closed. And uh, Kurt Howard came just before someone had closed. Contrast League, when you say the Contrast Cup? We, yeah, we played the Contrast Cup one year. Yeah. That to believe. That we, has to be the Contrast Cup, yes. Yeah. We played the Contrast Cup. Okay. Uh, I remember we played Arawak the game, and I believe it was behind... Uh, Tom Cliff. Tom Cliff Park, yeah. And I, and I think uh, in talking with Barry, Barry said we, we, we won that game 2-0 or something. So these guys could remember, I can't remember that. <laughs> I remember we played, you know, but a lot of details I, I can't recall, you know. Um, in doing a little quick research on, on the Tubman, the Tubman basically was keeping youths occupied. I always look at it as a, a very important um, function in keeping youths out of trouble and stuff. And you and I, uh, some days ago, were kind of brainstorming on that. Um, could you give some of the functions, some of the things you guys will helpful with in terms of, you know, keeping the youths occupied and stuff? Yeah, we, we, um, we used to, to, to provide recreation for, 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 for the young people in, and particularly in the area. Some of them used to come from out of, out of the area. We were at um, Oakwood and St. Clair. Uh, we were using um, uh, YMC, an old YMC building. Um, uh, so, like, I used to use uh, Oakwood on Friday nights for basketball. You know, we used to use Oakwood, Oakwood uh, Collegiate for, for practice. You know, there, was a, there wasn't a gym as such, but there was a, a, a big room upstairs that they used to have, like, dance classes, you know. Um, arts and crafts, all that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, so, you know, we, we tried to make do with whatever we had, but providing things for the kids to, to function in positive way. And um, do you know why that program doesn't exist anymore? Or? Uh, it, was, it, it was dependent a lot on funding, you know, and it, the, the funding was year to year, year to year. You know, and uh, I guess so what after about four or five years, Ian would know more about that because he he was actually in charge of the um, the program, the center at that time. That's Ian Jones, right? Ian Jones, yeah. Oh. And um, yeah, I think it was lack of funding, you know. At, at that around that time, too, I had started working part time at George Brown and um, in the athletic athletics department, and it, it turned into a full-time job the following year and um, just around that time that's when the center had closed. 
Yeah, I could identify you. I more could have identify you with George Brown. That's why when the top one thing came up, it was a little surprising. Um, how long you stayed at George Brown? Because um, oh, geez, I I was at George Brown for about twenty six years. There you go. That's why I identify you with George Brown. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how was that? What you, um, what you were doing there? Um, how was that program? Oh well, I was just uh, writing the intramural and recreational program. Um, I did some coaching with the, 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 the football team. Uh, then got into everything else. You know, yeah, just play basketball. I I eventually started a curl. You know, curling. <laughs> yes. Um, curling was it, it was it, it's the American sport. I mean, the Canadian sport. And if you ever see it, you know, it's, it's yeah. With the rock, rock, that, that's not the rock, one where you brush. Yeah, yes. You're shaving the eyes like a yes. You know? yes. And I ended up doing curling as well. You know? so I did a lot of, most of the sports that you had to do, you know, table tennis, you know, we used to have a table tennis um, tournaments and stuff like that. So I get teams together. And okay. So just encouraging sport and, and getting the kids at school to participate. Sign me up for the table tennis. <laughs> yeah, sign me up. Um, so, after that, let's talk about the. So you played in contrast with the, you know, you also did you play in contrast at all with Irene? I know you put the Tubman team in. I I ended up um, doing a, I again I was like doing the camp football, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so like when the the, the, the the old boys league started and you know uh, even before the old boys league, I think uh, uh, we had another league that was going, but mainly on weekends, you know, and uh, I, I used to be playing in those because you have time on the weekends to play, you know. Uh, I return, you know, uh, I return a man. What? No, no, well, one thing I wanted to mention. Okay, yeah. Um, Jules, Jules was talking about a, a league called the Chinese, Caribbean Chinese League. Yeah, Chinese Association. I, I, can't, I think it was a Chinese league, but it was me. I think it, if I remember well, I think it was put on by some just Jamaican guy. And um, I used to play in that league too. But it was like, you know, they, they, they pick you up. I played with a team called Flames. And Flames was, I, I think I got roped into that with um, Molino. <laughs> Molino had some friends who were playing in that league. They had this team called Flame. So on the Sundays, you know, they would say, yeah, we have a game. Come, you can come here. So, um, yes, yeah, so I was like the weekend footballer. But Chucky is a good fit for that league. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, okay. Uh, were you there when the, the formation of the tournament? I, I can't remember you being in the New York line going to the boys' high, but... Um, I uh, remember you officiating in the IRI tournament. So were you part of that IRI tournament committee? Yeah, I, I started with the, 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 the tournament when we were, we started actually at Brockton Stadium. And um, then we moved from Brockton. I think we played Brockton maybe two years and then we moved to um, uh, Lamport Stadium. Yeah, but I was always involved with the with, 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 Mostly at the referee in uh, part of it. Well, what you thought? What you thought about it? I mean, it was a. I mean, you had personnel and teams coming in from international, all over the place. Um, how how you look at that in terms of, from an official point of view, officiating the game was there any different flavor? We know defense force used to be always around semis final. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was good. Not only for football, but for the community, uh, because I I, I recall at, uh, it was something that people used to look forward to, you know. And a lot of people, maybe they might have might not have been involved or like to watch football, but they used to come because it was like a big public stadium, you know. Um, I would think we used to get maybe two thousand people there at least. 
you know, and teams from all, all the different um, communities used to come out, you know, Jamaican teams, Asian teams, you know, teams yeah. from the, the Washington used to be a mixture of, uh, of players, you know, Montreal come down, you know, so it, it, it was a good uh, community outing, and I think everyone used to look forward to that. Okay, the big picture, um, let's do your, yeah, your officiating Flemington too. Um, well, I mentioned, if you remember, I started um, the, the referees. Uh, the referee course, I remember coming on the referee course. The referees courses at George Brown. Yeah. Because uh, at, the, at the time we saw that, you know, um, a lot of guys play football, but they never knew rules of the game. They, saw the new rules of the game, but, uh, and I, I, I thought it was a good thing to start to get people into knowing, not, not really refereeing, but knowing the rules. And uh, the first year you came, and it was very well attended. I yeah, um, that was, the reason why I came to is because I was running the, um, the Flamengo League. Or the league at the time. And, okay. and, and I figured we were kind of short, short staff when it come to officials. So it was kind of nice when Mangi and Molino and some of these guys took the course too because in getting them to do the Flamengo League, I knew people couldn't query their, their, their status as a referee. You know, and um, yeah. it's always good to have that in your back pocket. But in, yeah, the, in yeah. the same breath too, um, you also refereed in, in Flemington, and I want to ask you what you thought of the Flemington League. Uh, the uh, the Flemington was, was a mixed bag. Um, uh, they had very good teams, and they had very, uh, I don't want to say bad teams, <laughs> but it, there, there were teams of, 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 of that, that you could see guys were just wrapped together at the last minute and they put them on the field or something like that. It was just a bunch of guys who were just doing pick up and say, let me put a team together. And those were the hard games to refuse because they knew nothing about rules. You know, the, the, the bigger teams when you're playing, no problem. Mm -hmm. You know, because they know the rules of the game. The, the other games that you had that, that were very problematic and difficult to refuse were those games that they didn't know uh, the rules at all. Well, I'll, I'll have to confess now, that was the reason um, I got you guys, because, <laughs> because you guys, I figured you had at least, you know, it's like having referees who didn't have the, the yellow and the red card. Yeah. So now when you're official, you have the yellow and the red card, and you should be able to explain everything properly and everything else, right? So, yeah. 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 But, but that's yeah, but yeah, I, I thought it, 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 it was a good, because again, anytime you see things uh, benefiting the community and you see people coming out, and you know it wasn't just football, you know, it was it was the community coming out and getting together for that that Sunday, you know, and people used to come out to to, to watch the game too, you know. So, yeah. In terms of community, I think it did it, 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 it did a big big survey. Yeah. Did you ever get a chance to? Watch the Marvel League? I used to come up once in a while. Well, you know, particularly when Molino was coming up, I'd, I'd come up and, and, and see the games. And to be honest, I really didn't see very many, many, many of the games, but I used to come up sometimes. What do you think of the atmosphere? Just, just the atmosphere? Yeah. I don't think it was like, like a, well, again, uh, you know, being, being someone who wasn't there very regularly. Um, it wasn't like Flemington. Yeah, because I, thought, I was just... I thought the atmosphere in Flemington was much uh, better, well, better received than it was in Mount. Again, I could be wrong. You know. Okay, and um, so overall now, um, this exercise we're doing here, we're doing the history and stuff, is because, um, as I say, I see everything dwindling. Participation, lack of teams, and for the sport, it, it's not really showing well because, you know, as you say and everybody saying, you, every time you talk about Flemo or Irie tournament, you talk about community 
everybody emphasizing the, the community involvement and if you don't have events the community didn't have no excuse to be out there so um what you think you know in terms of ari is not functioning anymore the league's not functioning anymore um i guess you don't know about the thompson park league do you um that, that's the old boys league yeah don't want to yeah. don't Thompson. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about it, and uh, you know. You ever been there? Never been there. No. Did you? That that brings us to this question: is, or what do you think caused Ari to not be functioning? Or did you see that we would not have a club? I mean, when I came up here, we had Club Trinidad, which was technically Ari Club. Yes. You know. I, I, and I don't think, well, I don't think it's only um, in this uh, sport that we have in it. Um, I, I've been involved through school, uh, through, uh, again at George Brown, uh, where uh, they had league. And then something comes up where, you know, we filled a void at the time, you know. And uh, uh, after that time, something has to come into take its place. And, if, if I can use an example, I had started a, a basketball program at Georgetown for kids 14, 14 years uh, and 15. And I remember starting that program because my son was playing at the time, but not getting time on the, on the court. You know, if, if, if they win it, okay, they put him in and he gets a, a play. And other kids I remember talking to, um, were mentioning the same thing. So I started the league down at George Brown, 14 and 15. Everybody who, who joined played, you know. Um, this was before uh, Raptors. And we used to have kids coming from Malton, Scarborough, kids in, 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 in the downtown area, to play in this league because there was nothing else out there, you know. That, that league went from 14th the first year to 16th the next year. And then they said, Shecky, what about um, us now? We, 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 we're older. We don't, you know, mm -hmm. we don't have any league to play. So then the 16th to 18th league started. At the end of that league, I ended up having 12 teams playing in the evening and on weekends. And again, because they had nowhere else to go. After that, the, the league started to uh, have a hard time drawing players because they're not coming from Morton again because Morton had the own league. You know? Yeah. Um, Scarborough had the own league going. You know, things, Region Park, league going on down there. You know? So in, in, it, it suggests to you that there's a time when you're. What you started, you filled a void at the time, and you started something that was worthwhile. After a while, it, 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 it dies off because a void has been filled. You know, and I think with Ivy it was the same thing. You know, guys were playing, and um, when their playing time had come to almost an end, you know, if there wasn't anything coming to follow it. You know, you guys came in after, but then after you guys came in, you know, there was nothing else after that. You know, guys started having kids, the children started getting big, and then they ended up coaching, you know. So we, we didn't continue because our playing days were done. Okay. All right, so and you have some examples to put so for the people listening and stuff, they they would get food for thought again because this is the exercise where we get different people with different versions, yeah. and um and what's nice about your version, you even have an example to show that uh, the evolution of how things happen, yeah. you know, yeah. and um but the end product is um if if we don't reach too old, we will still be twiddling our thumbs with not much to do besides watching TV, you know, yeah. instead, of, instead of going out there and taking some well, and sharing well, you, you could do that sort of stuff. Uh, at, at the whole age, you can't even do that. <laughs> 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 I have a story for you. Mm -hmm. a, few, a few years ago, my granddaughter was playing in a, in a league out in Pickering. And her aunt was coaching. 
UK. And the aunt uh, called me at the end and said, check, yeah, I can't make it to, to practice uh, on Wednesday. Uh, could you come and take the kids over for me? And they, these were like 12-year-old girls, you know? Mm -hmm. And I went, and I was always like to demonstrate that, you know, um, Vivian Junior and myself has always had kids on weekends practicing basic stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so since, since, since Mark and Adrian and Greg and all of that, you know, but I like to demonstrate. And I was trying to demonstrate a drill to these little girls and check his knees, say, no, 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 you can't do that. And I couldn't do it. My legs wouldn't allow me to do <laughs> the stuff that I figure in my head I get outside the do. And after that, I said, Shaky, that's it. That's it. Yeah, but you normally had a contract where you start to renew on that knee anyways. What happened? You didn't renew, <laughs> you didn't renew that contract or because I'm sure that it's surprising to many people. You did well because that's that's what I'm saying. You used to take your little sweat in the gym, but you never used to stay all the time, you know? So we kind of knew that you had a limit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, in, in moving forward now, uh, Jackie, what you think of from this exercise from the Caribbean community we will be going expanding to the whole situation about the sport in general here I mean we have the TFC and everything else that will be the next phase of these interviews where people probably will be seeing people from different organizations we uh, I can tell you that right now it seems like um, Tony Scarrett is the shoe in to be on the cover of the, the magazine. So um did you have any the pleasure of seeing him in Trinidad before you came here or you know Tony? Oh yeah, again? oh yeah. We all we all grew up in football one day. Um I remember Carol playing um in the car with uh uh Kiwasi, you know. Um I think Scarrow might have played about three or four years before me. I played in 59 in and Trinidad before you came here, so, or um, you know to the Yeah, he would have been about three, at least three years before me. And I, I followed Scarrow, you know, um, from Belmont. Uh, the younger brother, um, Michael, went to school with me too. You know. um, following that, I remember seeing Scarrow in, in the Dynamo. Then the Dynamo. Was it the yeah, same? Yeah. Was it the same scarrow? Because I understand if you were playing with one, you couldn't play with the other and stuff. So the no, dynamo. No, no, his younger brother, Michael, was yeah. at school with me. No, but... was my... scarrow was older than me. Tony, Tony was older than me. No, but you said you saw him with dynamos also because the. Oh the yeah, picture... oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, picture yeah. I have is with dynamos. So what I'm saying, I want to compare his game. You saw him in Intercal. How was he? Was he improving like most people do? Well, by the oh, time Scarrow, he was... Yeah, Scarrow was always a class with me. Then this was hard back. Yeah, but I'm a very classy, classy footballer. Very classy. That's how Mangi, de that's how Mangi, scale, Mangi no. described him as a higher gun, you know? Eh? Mangi described him as a higher gun. <laughs> so that tells me, that tells me, I mean, if we go back to the Westerns and them, that tells me something. <laughs> It looked like that's the guy that you would see playing in the Mova League. Somebody would bring him or you would see him in some other league, he, you know? He's a top guy. He was a top guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, so I wanted to hear your version, you know, because, um, you know, Scarrow oh, yeah, like, this Because that Tony and I was guys we looked up to, you know, because we, we were much younger, and, you know, we always, um, always, and you know, there's a funny thing as, as we're talking about Scarrow, you know, um, Vivian and myself used to play shoot, so, and we used to play a uh, uh, Sunday league, Sunday morning league. And in those days, Vivian went to Mary's, I went to Mary's, uh, Holly Carrington played for QRC. All of us used to play together, we were about QRC, Victor Gamaldo, QRC. So we, you know, we grew up playing together, so it wasn't like, he over there and I over here, we stay together regardless of if you get the right of you. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 
and you know what that wraps up now um, this exercise also make it very clear because there was a perception and, and it's being played down on both sides and I can see why it should be played down really is that one of the stigma I got when I came up here with the West Indies Irie thing was the nationality thing right but um, when you look at the closeness of you and Mangi and the Maz from home regardless um, whether it was a, a Bajan team or they didn't really matter normally when you know somebody the closeness that's how the game goes most things goes that way so I didn't realize it's as close as it was now that I'm doing this exercise I realized that you guys were really that close from St. Trinidad. Yeah, we really grew up together. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now the yeah. public getting to know that and they would see how automatic this thing was. And because as I say, I came in the whole situation in 74 and the rivalry was intense and somebody, you know, obviously there's an overtone of nationality and stuff, right? But, yeah. but um, from the closeness I'm seeing now and hearing, it had nothing to do with that. No, no. And, you know, just when I when I looked at uh, the BCAC and, and, and someone, to be honest, ninety nine percent of the kids were Jamaican. You know, we had a splattering of Trinidadian, um, uh, uh, a few Bajan, but most of my kids used to be uh, uh, from Jamaica. You know, so you, you can't be, you know, you're working with people. Once you're working with people, people are people. Ex you know? Exactly. And, and you deal with, with, with everybody. So, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. And these guys are adamant that it never entertained, uh, you know, even when IRI was formed, even to this day, they are still saying they're staying multi, multicultural, you know, and um, yeah. they welcome all people. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, we, we, we still know you, you still know all the Jamaican guys too. Yeah, you know? yeah. I have a story with you, uh, for you now. Um, when I leave St. Mary, you know, everybody, uh, you, 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 you go big, you know, because in those days you're playing with big men too, you know, because we played in the Forest Spin League too. You know, so when I left St. Mary, um, I don't know if you hear about Matthew Newman. Yeah. Matthew was one of the fasty dribblers in, 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 in football. My idol. Anyhow, he used to work with your sister. So when I was leaving St. Mary, she said, um, tell me to see, she said, let's get you to come on um, and play with, 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 with come and join Maple. Now, Maple, you could, the crack Maple was, was, was it, very, very difficult. That's right. I even my, I my fresh self say, you know, um, okay, while I enjoyed for the football I was enjoying was just playing with Luton Town, you know. So I went, I could make a maple team, you know. Um, I play intermediate that year. The next year, um, I should have asked me to come and play. So it's for the division again, but they had one shit team. I play one game and I leave this after that. After that game. <laughs> And you know your ball is developed when you go back in comfort zone, eh? Yeah, yeah, you know. So I, ended up there, I, I, I made a couple of teams uh, representing NASL too, you know. But um, you, you, you have to play where you're feeling happy. You know, and I was happy with the guys again, you know, that kind of thing. So, well, Chucky, um, I finally, ladies and gentlemen, this guy was hiding from you guys, not really me, eh? Because obviously he, he had serious information to give out. And uh, I want to thank you for giving me the information and for finally deciding that you want to have a say in this project. So I want to thank you for everything and the information. Yeah, no problem. All right, take care. Yeah. All right.